Hi, this is Tim. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to turn an Allen Bradley Compact Logix or Control Logix PLC into a Modbus server. This was a fascinating AOI that I discovered recently on Rockwell Automation's sample code site. And to find it, we're just going to Google Rockwell sample code. And that first result should be the sample code library from Rockwell Automation. And I am going to search for Modbus AOI. And right here, we have the Modbus TCP add-on instruction for the Control Logics and Compact Logics. So that's what we're going to download. And you don't need a support contract or even a login to download this. You can just hit the download button, agree, and download. Now we've already used this in a previous video for the Modbus client. So I have it extracted here. But we have the logic, which has the rungs that we're going to import in. And then we have the manual, which has the TCP client, which we used in a previous video. And this time we're going to be using the TCP server. So let's go ahead and start a new program in Studio 5000. And I'm going to be using a 1769L16ERBB1B. And I'm going to call this our Modbus server. And we have two expansion modules. And the only reason I'm putting two expansion modules is they are on the side of this trainer for another video that we're getting ready to do. And I just didn't want to take them off. Also, the server and client in Modbus can get a little confusing. And so here's the way I remember it is not really a very technical way is if somebody tells you, hey, here are the numbers of the addresses in Modbus that you need to read and write data to, then they already have a server and you're gonna need to set up a client to read and write from those addresses. Now, in this case, I have no addresses. I need to create somewhere to store all this stuff. In that case, we're gonna need a Modbus server. So that's why we're creating it. And in a future video, we're actually gonna use this Micro 820 to read this Modbus data. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish on this. And then let's go ahead and open up this Modbus TCP server manual. And honestly, this is one of those videos where I'm hitting the record button and figuring out how to do this with you because I haven't even opened this manual yet. But it looks like implementation is on page six. All right, very similar to the client, it is recommended to add AOIs into periodic tasks with a rate of 10 milliseconds or higher. So we're going to go to Studio 5000. And typically when we're doing these lessons, we just open up the main program, hit the main routine, and start typing away. In this case, what they're saying is we want this in a periodic task. And your default task is a continuous task. That means it runs as fast as it can. So we're going to right click task and go new task. And I'm going to call this my mod bus task. And then inside of it, we're going to need a program. So I'm going to right click it, add new program. And this is going to be our mod bus program. And then same as our main program inside of here, we're going to need a routine to put our instructions in. So new routine, and I'm going to call this our mod bus routine. And I'm going to open that up. And here is where we're going to put our program. Mod bus program, mod bus routine, which is under this task. That means this will execute every 10 milliseconds. All right, so now it says to import the rungs. And since we're doing server, we're going to import the server rung. So just right click one of your rungs and you'll have import rungs and navigate to the AOI that we downloaded from the sample code library. And in there, remember, we had logic, manual and visualization. Well, under logic, here it is, the TCP server. And then we have the option to find and replace values. The default is server underscore zero one. You could name it whatever you want. I don't see a need to change the name on mine. So I'm just gonna click the okay button. And all right, it's showing what the rung should look like. And yeah, ours looks pretty much like that. Oh, well, when I open it up, I got the extra rung there. Let me delete that out. And then it says right click monitor the ref connection here. Right click monitor. And it will open that up. All right, and we've got a local slot 
local address, local port, inactivity timeout, message source, message destination. Let's go see what it says to do with these. Span the parameters. All right, local address. For compact logics with dual IP mode, specify the IP address of the local connection. Leave this blank for all other cases. Great, we don't have to mess with that. Leave the default at 502, and this is the typical Modbus port. And start TCP server, is that it? Okay, it looks like we're testing after that. Let's download our program then. And if you need any help downloading your program or configuring your drivers, or if you think I went too fast through tags, routines, or programs, then look down in the description. We have lessons on all of that. And while I'm downloading, please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. We put at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Actually, this whole Modbus series about Studio 5000 and the Compact Logics Control Logics PLC was because of a student's question. So I love your questions. I do read all your questions. And yeah, they turn out to be a lot of the videos. Also, I will put a link to our trainers down in the description. Whenever you're ready to get serious about learning about PLCs, feel free to reach out to us. Okay, we are running. And in our instructions, it said, start Modbus TCP server by setting tag attached to input enable to one. So input enable, we're gonna put a one there. Input enable, one. Okay, status enable, status waiting. I guess it's good that we did not get a faulted. Then there was some test about it. Monitoring Modbus TCP servers. Modbus zone one data. That's where we're gonna be looking for. Okay, and there's the number of active connections. Okay, and there's the, all right. <laughs> leave it to me to jump ahead, but here are the status things on the right side. So waiting means it's waiting for an incoming connection from a client. And we downloaded a client software last time. Let me go to the ref Modbus data. Right click that and monitor. That's gonna get us to right in that area. And similar to our client, there's our zeros, ones, threes, and fours. So let me open up the Modbus poll software that I downloaded off the internet last time. And I don't even remember what this was. I found it on, okay, there you go, Modbus poll on the web. Let's have a look at that. So here they are, modbustools.com. And they have a free download. It's a 30 day trial. We're trying it out here, but okay, we need a connection, connect. Okay, and yeah, after 30 days, we're gonna need to enter a registration key. We've got 29 days left. And then we need to enter an IP address. And this is the IP address that we were testing the Micro 820 Modbus server with. In this case, our path here, 192.168.161, that's the IP address that we just created this Modbus server at. Enter 161 there, and we'll click OK. And we didn't get any error here, and it does look like it's transmitting something. I wonder, if, even though we're not actually looking at something, I wonder if that made our connection go up over here. There you go, we got one active connection, and now we see that it is accepted. Let's go and put a value in. I'm gonna open up our 40,000s, and in 40,000, we are gonna put one, two, three, four, five. And there we go, we got one, two, three, four, five. And just to make sure that multiple ones are working, let's put something in number nine. Number nine, I'm just gonna put four, three, two, one. I go to my polling software and we have four, three, two, one. So that easy. We now have turned a Compact Logix into a Modbus server. And already my, my gears are turning my head because if I can turn this into a Modbus server, it can also connect to devices over Ethernet IP, DeviceNet, and other things. We can turn this into a really cool communications bridge now. So great job, Rockwell, again. If you didn't catch our Modbus client video, look down in the description. We have a link to it. And yeah, our next video, I think we're going to take this Micro 820, turn it into a Modbus client, and read data back and forth between these two. 
So if this video has been helpful, again, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber with TW Controls. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like these. When you're ready for some intense training, check out our PLC lab. And if our videos have helped you out, but you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.